Okay, so we are here talking about water distribution systems and we have done some other examples where we looked at how you could analyze the flow and the pressure throughout water distribution systems using pipe network analysis and we did that using the Hardy Cross method where we have to make sure that we enforce mass balances at the junctions and energy balances around the loops and we saw how that becomes very complicated when you look at big networks as they get more and more pipes and at some point this becomes impractical and so here I want to look at how we can use a tool called EPA net to do this and this is a very sophisticated tool that's developed by the US Environmental Protection Agency for water distribution system analysis and it can give us the flows and the heads it can actually also work with transient conditions where flows are going up and down versus time as the water demand changes and can really do a lot of things so we're just going to do a short introduction to how it works here um, so we're looking right now at the window here for EPA net and it looks like a lot of other software packages uh, it is free. Uh, I don't know that there's an interface like this available for anything other than Windows, so you need to be on a Windows computer to run it, although I think the code can run on other operating systems. It doesn't have this Windows interface. So here looking at it, we have a lot of the typical things where you have files, you can open up files, you can import data from other places to help draw like a complex system more quickly, and you can export what you have to other software to, to work with if you're writing a report or something. Okay, so these are kind of typical things you would see in a window. Um, looking at the buttons here, these are associated with that printing and saving and whatnot. <clears throat> when we get over here, these are the buttons that have to do with kind of the commands from this window. The lightning bolt will run a simulation once we have drawn it up and gotten all the information in there. Uh, this one will make a table of information, like if you want to look at all the pipes or all the junction ele uh, pressures and elevations you can do that here uh, these are objects to navigate around so here we're selecting different objects and here you can grab a bunch of objects and you can move around if it's a really big network you can do all that here and then these buttons over here you can use to actually draw the features okay quote unquote features this is like uh, EPA net models are made up of a bunch of different features that are all connected together to form the network. And so we have to draw the features and we have to provide the data for all those features. So there's pumps, there's valves, and there's uh, pipes, and then there's tanks, there's reservoirs, and there are junctions. All right. So when you draw a network, you have, you have to have some source water. Uh, if you use a reservoir, that means it's like an infinite source that doesn't change over time. That's in the EPA net world, okay, so that's like a lake or something where if we start pumping out, it really doesn't change the water level because it's it's so much bigger than what we're pumping. A tank, on the other hand, can change volume and water level over time, and that's more like a real water tower that you would see in a water system. And then we've got our pipes, and then you can add pumps, and you can provide data about pumps. And then you can add valves that may restrict flow if, if you need that. Okay, so these are the key things that we're going to use to build models out of. And then we can view information and run it over here. And then we've got our typical Windows interface up here. All right, so let's start here by opening up uh, an example. That, there are a few examples that come with the software. So I'll click open. And here I'm this brought me into the examples folder there for them that come with it and so we can just open that up and this shows it here in the window um, this one it's kind of cramped in this setup I guess but there's a source water here that's a reservoir and then there's a pump there that is pumping out of the reservoir and then it's got this network what looks like one two three four five six seven eight nine it's got like nine junctions and then it goes to a tank and so the pump uh, fills it up to a tank like you would have in a water tower and you, you know you pump it in here and then <clears throat> the pump would maybe wait and water gets distributed through the network over time this is what uh, an example might look like and so when we're when we have all the data for these we can go in here if we're on the select button we can go in and look at the info and this brings up the info this is pipe number 11 and it, it starts at node 11 and goes to node 12 and this is the length of the pipe it doesn't this little table doesn't show the units it's a little annoying you can find the units from looking at the help for these file for these um, for EPA net so it will tell you some of the default units 
if you switch from like meters to feet but it doesn't actually show it here which is a little annoying I would change that but anyway it doesn't have uh, the flow or velocity because we haven't computed anything yet you can see those are here with this kind of yellow uh, darker color so the white ones are things that you can go and change if you want to and then these are things that are computed by the by the code at the end okay so we can go in and change that we can also uh, provide different labels to things if we want using the view we can go into options and notation and we can have it show like all the node IDs or all the the link IDs so so nodes here represent junctions and reservoirs and tanks and links the word link means a pipe basically so if I have it do that it should show all the all the IDs of the of the different pipes here so this is pipe 21 and this is pipe 113 and so on Okay, so anyway, all the data should be in here that is needed to run this because it's an example that came with it. So we can just hit the run button and it will tell us if it was successful and if it's not, it will give us some information to help us debug. And so here that ran and we can go in now and we can look at the flows and the pressures at the system. And so I'm going to pull up a lot of them using this uh, table button here. And so this it says we can either look at the nodes or the links so we can look at reservoirs junctions etc or we can look at the links and so uh, if we want to look at nodes first let's do that and let's see what it said what we had set for elevation that's something we control but we can look at it here this will show the demand that's how much that's getting pulled out of the system at that point the head and then the pressure we can look at all that I'm going to turn off the chlorine so this is a water quality parameter and, and EPA net can go and compute how much chlorine is left in the system that's a kind of cool feature we, we won't be looking at that really here but we're just going to use it for flow but but that's something else it can do all right so we've got all that if we click OK now it will bring up this little table and it shows us here all these junctions it shows us what the elevations are it shows us the demand how much water is being pulled out in gallons per minute and then the head and then the pressure at each of those points okay and so you can go down here and look at all of them here's the reservoir it's set at 800 feet uh, it's got a negative demand because uh, this is how much water is getting pulled out and distributed to all these other points including that tank uh, here that's shown in the last step. Okay, so this is how you can get information about the uh, nodes. And now let's look at the uh, pipes. So to look at the pipes, we click on links here, and then it has different data that are available. And so length and diameter are things we would specify. We might want to look at those. And then things that the model would compute would be the flow, velocity, head loss. It can compute friction factor if we are doing the Darcy-Weisbach equation. I think in this one it is not using it, so we don't really need to see that because it's using Hayes and Williams. And so click OK, and here is the information for all the pipes, how long they are, their diameter. And then here's the flow rate that was computed, the velocity, and then the unit head loss. So this is like in feet per 1,000 feet. So 1.82 means there's... 1.82 feet of head loss per thousand feet of uh, pipe or 0 0.00182 it would be like the the head loss divided by L okay if you were computing that so that's kind of an overview of EPA net some of the features and a few other things you could do I guess let's see we could it's kind of got a feature where it will show the direction of flow we might want to do that so with view we can go in and do view options and flow arrows and then we'll do it right now it's set at nine we'll do like filled arrows and click OK and you can see water goes from here to there to there and up into the tower and then it goes around this way anyway these show all the flow arrows and you can get it to show I think you can get it to show the velocity and flow rate also here that you can play with these labels anyway so that kind of gives us an overview of how EPA net is set up and we will start there and we'll actually work an example here uh, in the next video. So.